All right, why don't we start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and the Republic, Republic of America. America. One nation, One nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and justice, justice for all. For all. Oh, amen. And uh, let's wow. have that uh, moment of reflection that uh, we all hopefully stay safe, stay well, and pray that this epidemic uh, will end uh, and, and level out soon. Oh, yeah. Amen. And Amen. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Jose. Jose, we're very sorry for loss of your wife, Elena, and Thank I think you. Phil will, will bring something, uh, say something about that under the fellowship. Thank uh, you. Glad to have you here, Jose. And we feel for you. Uh, our April birthdays are up and uh, you can see the names, and uh, we've got a few 90-year-olds, Frank Noel, Alan Sachs, Alan Silverman, Marv Weinstein, and Tom Sullivan, which I don't think any are on. But the fireworks go up for Stan Pelter. God bless Stan. He's turning 100. Wow. wow. So, uh, what is the actual date of his birthday? I, hey, you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is Stan has been waiting for this. March 20, I think it's March 25th. But he wants his free call. Don't April. Me that. You mean April? Or, oh, that it was in March. Okay, April. <clears throat> That's true. Uh, uh, our anniversary, and I see Mike is here uh, online with us. Congratulations, Mike, for your 10th uh, anniversary. If you come up to through the screen and make it through to Carl, <laughs> he'll, he'll give you your uh, pin. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait a while. <laughs> but congratulations. <laughs> man. Uh, I haven't heard from John. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Uh, but, you know, last I spoke to him, uh, he's uh, tending to his business and uh, he's uh, doing his therapy and uh, hopefully getting better and staying out of trouble. <laughs> Has anybody heard from John uh, in the last few days? No, I talked to him yesterday. This is Bill Flannery. And he told me he's in the process of selling his house. He's going to downsize to a rental condominium. Okay, he is making that public now. All right, I knew that. Uh, yeah, he had told me that also when I spoke with him okay. earlier this yeah, week. Yeah, he, he, last he's staying up at uh, one of those uh, sweet hotels up in uh, Route 7 uh, north of the parkway in Norwalk. And... Uh, he was happy because he had a walk-in shower. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds good, though. Yeah, he sounded really up. And uh, so he, uh, he asked me for the phone. He asked me for the phone number of one of the members. He wanted to talk about uh, get a reference on some of the condominiums in uh, Stanford. Okay. So anyway, Jan is. Uh, healing and, and doing well, and he's got a lot on his plate right now, so uh, I guess that's why we're not really uh, hearing from him, and plus he's only using the phone, he doesn't get to the library uh, anymore to do the uh, go on computer. And uh, all right, meetings obviously uh, going to be a while. Uh, just a point of information, we had our King School neighborhood meeting and one of the neighborhood 
uh, people besides the King faculty people. Uh, there's a doctor, and uh, she got off a phone. Uh, she had just gotten off a uh, Stanford Medical Hospital uh, group uh, Zoom meeting, and they're talking. Hopefully, the peak is going to come the latter part of this month. And then after that, uh, we'll hold off. So uh, the one thing she did say is that uh, the people who do get this virus uh, do develop immunities to it, like uh, they would chicken pox or any uh, you know other virus. It's not, a, it's not a flu where it comes back. It is a virus, and the immunities uh, do develop. Uh, from it. That's How long the immunities last, you know, that's something else. But uh, so that's a little positive information anyway. Uh, and again, if anybody has any comments or news, uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact myself, Carl, or Phil especially on fellowship. Okay, now we'll get into uh, the bylaws. Uh, and this is just reiterating, on, on March 12th, the, the board endorsed the updates to the bylaws to make them consistent with increases in dues that were proposed over the last year and uh, the shift in... Uh, life member eligibility that was also approved and uh, clar wording clarifications uh, just to make it easy to read and the way that begins in the year the member terms 91. Can you cut that off? Somebody's got background noise coming. Looks like, looks like Dick Fisher. Yeah. It's Rosalie again. <laughs> I'm cutting it off. Right. I'm telling her to cut it off. I can't. Dick, yeah. I can't. Go on mute. Just mute yourself. He, he's finished. He's done. Well, we need Dick. Uh, we need Dick alive uh, uh, speaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I'll make it fast. Okay. Now. Uh, Based on some Connecticut laws and whatnot, rather than uh, take a vote on the actual bylaw, I guess, Dick, you want to explain uh, quickly what uh, we're going to do and uh, vote <laughs> to appoint me as a yeah. proxy? All right. Simply, it's this. There's no provision in our bylaws or in the uh, Nunstock Corporation law right now for electronic voting of uh, members of an organization. However, it does provide that you can electronically name somebody as your proxy to vote for you. So what we've done, instead of having each of you vote for the bylaws, what you're doing is you're voting as a proxy or you're naming Joe as your proxy for his vote but the uh, poll will say that you either appoint Joe as your proxy to vote in favor of the bylaws change or you appoint him to vote against the bylaws change or you do not appoint him at all in effect abstaining from the vote. Shall we proceed to vote? All right. We can does every, proceed does, to vote. Does everybody see the poll? I launched it. Yes. yes. I yes. see voting. I see voting taking place. Done. Okay, we've got uh, we've got thirty one. Right, I guess this is yeah, it's up to you to name the uh, numbers, and I'm done, and I will remute. 
Yep. Right now we're at uh, 33 out of 52 voting. Uh, what is it? A majority? <laughs> it's at this 30, point, it's a majority. 32, 32 <laughs> for the pro for the changes. One person against the changes, but giving you their their proxy vote to vote against it. Okay, I feel like I'm the electoral college. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the bylaws for. The bylaws provide for a vote of a majority of those at the meeting, so it passes. Okay. Yeah, right now, you know, we've got 34 out of 53 people voting. 35. So, uh, let's have somebody else sign on. Whoever just signed on, if you want to do a fast vote. I think the others and are waiting. For a Stanford uh, advocate to tell them which way to vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Joe, I'll let you decide when you want to stop the voting. We've got 35 out of 54 right now. And what do we need? 20. Uh, you, need you, got 20 the majority. you got more than the majority. Right? Okay, let's give it uh, till two minutes and 30 seconds, and then we'll end the polling. Okay. You've got five seconds to poll. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay. Bingo. The poll is ended. A, we have a total of this of 43 40. in favor and two against. So you have to raise two fingers on one hand and uh, 43 on the other. Okay. So uh, share results. <laughs> Can everybody see him? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I guess now, uh, Dick, uh, we can close the, the polling. <clears throat> then I guess in, in, I would have to uh, cast the ballot uh, for the membership as a proxy that we approve the uh, bylaw updates as presented uh, <clears throat> in the previous week uh, with the written uh, bylaws. Okay, we can move on. Great. Thank, the, you. Uh, Thank you, everyone. That was painless. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. I'm surprised that uh, we're, us old guys are so high tech. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> it is truly amazing. No, it's uh, not. We're not so high tech. I still can't get my camera to work. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan, that, most Alan. of us old guys. But but it's a vote for Steve Fisher for running this thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. You it. Okay. Dick, thank you for your assistance. Uh, Dick Fisher, thank you for your assistance in uh, guiding us through this. Uh, Ordeal. Really appreciate the, what you went through. <laughs> okay, uh, turn it over to Ira. I presume everybody received the minutes for last week, March 26th, when we had our last online meeting. Uh, the attendance was 52, and um, seems to be about that today. 57. If there are no additions or corrections, um, Joe is the proxy to vote for the minutes being approved. Oh. Uh, they're approved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, save, save the dates. Larry. Save the dates. Uh, we are still at what this moment on. <clears throat> For the SMAS uh, day of service on May 8th, Joe, you won't have anything to say about that. Uh, no, at this point, uh, it's still a go, and uh, hopefully we've reached a turning point, but we'll be outside, and unless anything changes, you know, unless the COVID idiots, that's a new term that's being coined, C-O-V-I-D-I-O-T-S, and those are people that have a total disregard of <coughs> anything and everything that's uh, 
being said about social distancing, uh, go out hoarding uh, food, and uh, now the latest uh, third definition is people that are dropping their uh, masks and gloves uh, on the street instead of putting them in uh, trash. Oh, wonderful. So uh, that's a new term uh, that's added to our lexicon these days is covid idiot. COVID-idiot. So, if they cool. prevail and they have to shut down the parks like they did in Greenwich, we might be uh, SOL in this case. But uh, let's hope we can get, do it and get together and at least have uh, a modicum of our life back. Que a question uh, on the humorous side. Will gloves and masks be su supplied? Well, I don't know about masks. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, the gloves probably will be provided because we're going to be, they've done that in the past, so we've always had gloves by the, uh, the city and uh, <coughs> they have them, but if you feel comfortable bringing your own, definitely uh, bring your own. But, uh, yeah, again, we're going to be outdoors and uh, hopefully we'll be keeping uh, a safe distance uh, from each other. So, but let your own conscience and common sense be a guide in anything that we do. Okay, uh, scheduled for June 1st is the spring golf outing at Sterling Farms. Uh, target date is May 1st. Uh, currently, <clears throat> I don't know who gets emails from Sterling Farms, but uh, their current policy is that um, on weekdays only walkers are allowed on the course. So if that's the case, uh, um, uh, really, they uh, will obviously cancel. So, uh, on weekends they do have carts, but only. Uh, one person per cart. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are yeah. continuing social yeah, distancing. Surely oh. farms weekdays only walkers are allowed. Surely farms weekdays only walkers. Next slide. Tennis, uh, again, um, Scalzi Park is still open. I took a drive through it yesterday. There were uh, people playing tennis, but uh, people walking, people um, uh, jogging. Uh, actually saw two people playing bocce. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what the situation is. And we hope to do that on June 8th. So we'll have to, uh, it's wait and see on that as well. Next slide. Uh, the Rock Rimmin luncheon for June 24th. Uh, again, things are uncertain. We don't know what the uh, situation is going to be in June. Uh, hopefully our, this uh, COVID-19 will have dissipated significantly by then and uh, group outings will be permitted. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, fishing trip in July, scheduled for the second week. Uh, Bill McGuire, uh, Jim Dunn, and Morty Klein uh, will be taking charge. There's a lot of fish out there waiting to be caught, so uh, hopefully there'll be a number of guys sign up for that. Next slide. Uh, September 17th, the annual picnic at Cove Island Park. Hopefully we'll all be out of the woods by then and we can all enjoy that. Uh, um, hopefully by June, uh, we'll be going forward with signups. And uh, again, everything is in a wait and see out of situation. So thanks for your attention. Uh, and uh, uh, our uh, hopes are that we are able to get on with some of the, a number of these activities going forward. <clears throat> Larry, have we heard anything from... Uh... I haven't heard back from my email, which I think uh, a lot of you saw, to about the refund from uh, 
um, Water's Edge. Uh, Giovanni's Water's Edge. I will give him a call if I don't hear back uh, by the end of the week. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Carl. Okay, uh, membership. Uh, the uh, Even if we're unsuccessful in actually holding a tennis tournament, we have had one, uh, one benefit of keeping it on the uh, slideshow is David Stein has uh, rejoined membership as Larry suggests he wants to win the, uh, the tennis tournament. So <laughs> we've got uh, four new members this year and we're up to uh, 243 members. Bill. Hi. Hi everybody. Unfortunately we have shared the sad news about Dr. Jose losing his wife and our sincere condolences, Jose. We know it's been a long struggle and you were there by our side. Thank um, you. We're so sorry. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, Jose, do you want to say anything? <clears throat> well, I will miss her very much. She was very supportive of my membership with the SMAS and she came to many of the uh, <clears throat> uh, happenings and the, the dinners and lunches and uh, she was she had the chance to meet many a lot of you and the wives. Uh, uh, I will remember her and I will miss her very much. Thank you all of you for your condolences. May her memory always be a blessing to you and everyone. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Um, um, does anybody have any news to share with the rest of us? You know, that's my job to ask. Any, any good news? I think the good Johnson? news is that we don't have anybody that we know of that has gotten the COVID virus. Uh, not so. Uh, <coughs> uh, not so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that they want it shared. So. Okay. okay. Bill Johnson has his hand up. Uh, Bill. Yeah, I got uh, good news. Uh, last night, um, my son Bob up in the Boston area is recovering from the virus. Wow. Oh, oh fantastic! Ooh. That's and, good. Um, he was able to order ch uh, Chinese food, so I knew he was getting better. <laughs> okay. Thank God. Yeah. And a person who I know who is not a member, uh, but is somewhat in our little younger than we are, um, <clears throat> is in out of ICU and is now at home. So uh, for those who actually wind up in ICU, there is. Uh, uh, hopes of getting better. Well, we pray that this all will pass soon. <laughs> One bit of good news, uh, a bit of good news, my grandson is graduating from Virginia Tech with an engineering degree, a five-year engineering degree, so that's a bit of good news that we could share. Very much. Thanks, man. Bill Monko here, my uh, <laughs> daughter, who uh, was going to Denmark this summer uh, on a uh, uh, part of her doctor's training, I guess, um, that was canceled. So that was kind of sad because it was quite an honor for her to go there. So a lot of things are uh, uh, canceled at this point. Mm. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Dick? On the Good morning. Club. We are have been scheduled for June uh, for uh, April twenty second for the next book, which is Field of Blood by Joanne Freeman, and it's quite a story of the pre Civil War period. And I'm trying to get us a, a Zoom number that I can. Uh, publicize within a week, so we'll do a Zoom meeting. And I would imagine that maybe even in May, for which we have not chosen a date, <clears throat> I was waiting to see what's going on, 
a little later is Code Girls by Liza Monday, which is a very interesting story about women who uh, could crack code during the Second World War. So uh, I'll try to get a, um, a Zoom connection pretty soon, and I'll publicize it. Thank you, Dick. Well, Steve, we, we have, how would that work? Uh, Dick could use the, uh, the membership we have, right, Steve? Yeah. Yes, I gave him the login and all. And Dick, if you have a problem, just contact me and I'll set it up for you. Okay, Steve. <clears throat> just let me know. Okay. Alan, are uh, you with us? Yes, yes good, uh, good morning all. Uh, I've uh, completed our uh, annual uh, heating oil price survey uh, to uh, aid those of us who uh, heat our homes with, uh, with heating oil. Uh, if you are in that group, you know, grab a hold of a pencil and prepare to make a couple of notes. Uh, or alternatively, of course, you'll be able to refer to these charts uh, once they get posted on the uh, SMAS uh, website. Um, everybody has those, uh, Alan, everybody has the slides because the uh, slides were sent uh, distributed to uh, the membership. Oh, that's also, that's also very handy then. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, indeed, uh, just uh, on Tuesday, uh, oil prices hit an 18 year low. Uh, West Texas crude uh, dropped to uh, $20 a barrel. Uh, so uh, for next winter, uh, you can uh, already uh, consider locking in uh, your price for the heating oil system. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, you can do that now or you can choose to hold off. It's your call. Um, the uh, first chart that's up on the screen right now um, summarizes the price survey uh, that I completed earlier this week across four oil companies. Uh, the best pricing uh, turned out to be uh, reliable oil uh, at $1.80 a gallon, uh, locked in for uh, whatever your consumption is, uh, and for new customers, uh, their service contracts are at half price, uh, that being $165 for the furnace, and if you have a separate hot water heater, uh, the, the 103. Um, uh, I, I did um, do a uh, comparison uh, to what it was costing us for this current winter that's just ending. Um, uh, for this winter, uh, the, the survey that we had done uh, and the recommendation as to who to lock in with had been at the best at that point was two dollars a gallon. So when you compare uh, at a, perhaps a thousand gallon per heating season level, uh, there is a you know a relatively huge saving of uh, six hundred and eighty dollars for next winter compared to our cost uh, for the current winter, uh, given that you lock in uh, at that dollar eighty uh, a gallon uh, price. Uh, Alan, I have a question when you're open. Um, in terms of the questions, maybe I, I'm just going to quickly breeze through the rest of the presentation and then uh, we'll, we'll ask, answer anything that, that we might be able to. Um, if you go to the next slide then, Carl, um, I have a slide for each of the uh, three other relevant uh, providers. Uh, the phone number, which is what you would need, is, is being shown. Uh, and um, I do give credit uh, to Bill Jones <coughs> for bringing Reliable uh, Oil's name to my attention. Uh, I followed up on that and then also checked uh, with the uh, other uh, providers. The prices shown here are the regular price, ongoing prices for, 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 for service, and we're, uh, we'll be getting um, uh, one half of it. Um, the one aspect of reliable oil to mention is that 
once you sign up with them, they do come out shortly thereafter to check out your, uh, your furnace. Uh, I think to, to give them some assurance that, that, the, that the furnace is in a reasonably good condition so that their service contract, which obligates them to maintain it for the, for the season, that it, it would not be um, uh, too extraordinarily burdensome for them to try to, uh, to, to service a furnace that hasn't been taken care of. So that's, that's one aspect that, that, that was mentioned. Switch, going on to the next slide, uh, Mitchell Oil is the company that we had, had quite a few of us sign up with a couple, uh, three years ago at a very attractive price. Uh, so on an ongoing basis, um, they are giving us uh, a price of 10 cents less than, than their regular price for, for, for their general pool of customers. That price is the $1.949 that's shown there and the related cost of, of service is shown. Going to the next slide, uh, which is the, um, the final one uh, here, Standard Oil was the company that we had had to deal with for the, for the prior season. Uh, going forward now, uh, their lock-in price is shown at a dollar nine six nine, and uh, service uh, contract prices there they only discount twenty percent for new customers. Continuing customers don't get the discount on uh, on the uh, 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 servicing price. Uh, so, uh, Carl, if you would just go back to the um, slide for reliable. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, my view is that this really is a good time uh, to uh, lock in. Uh, no one is terrific at, at timing what is the absolute low, uh, but uh, but, but, but from my perspective, uh, you know, we're getting one heck of a save versus last year. I did go ahead and lock in uh, with Reliable yesterday. Um, I do have a technical issue with one of their uh, contract forms. So if uh, those of you who may well proceed to lock in with them, uh, you can give me a call and I'll, I'll give you some bit of a background as to my perspective on one of the forms, how you could adjust it very slightly. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, it, it does, uh, in my perspective, this is a good time and reliable may well be the, the company that you might want to go, go with. So uh, if anyone now at this okay, point- Okay, Alan, hold on a second. If questions. anybody wants to ask a question, please use the raise your hand and we'll try and get everybody to uh, no, not raise your hand on the, uh, the button. The button. Yeah. <clears throat> I have what a question. I, I guess Bill is mentioning, Bill Monko is yeah. trying to, go ahead, Bill. Uh, ahead, Bill. What's, the, what's the procedure? Like I, I now have oil, which stand, I now have service with Standard Oil, which I probably want to keep. Do I call them up and say I'm a member of SMAS or do I got to give them some kind of number or something? Um, I, if you if you simply wanted to continue with Standard Oil, um, you would simply you would call them. Uh, it 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 doesn't matter that you're a member of SMAS in that regard. With SMAS as an ongoing uh, customer of, of Standard Oil, um, you, you could simply tell them you want to lock in at this point. At okay, the, so this is a regular lock in price anyway. That's right. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but but I but I also. I can't actually remember. I, you know, I spoke to them earlier in the week. Um, do call them and find out. It, 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 I'm not sure if this is a the same price that they offer to regular only new customers or not. Some of these some of these companies have only new customer pricing. It is not SMA specific, that's for sure at Standard Oil. But so my suggestion to you is call, find out what you would be paying on a lock-in basis at this point, you'll hear the number and you can compare it to that chart that I have of, of all the different vendors and you make your decision accordingly. 
So we're not getting a benefit because we're a block of customers like from SMAS. That is, that's correct. We're not. The only, the only company in, in the survey that is nominally giving us a, uh, an advantage is because we're SMAS is Mitchell Oil. For the others, it's mostly new customer pricing that is being displayed here. Anything else, folks? I have a question. Uh, is this only for our members or does it uh, trickle down to our family members? Like if I want to pass this on to my son. A a absolutely. It, it does follow on to whoever you uh, suggest other than perhaps Mitchell. And my guess is Mitchell would also give the favorable pricing if, if, if they, the person calling in said, hey, I'm related in, in some fashion uh, to uh, SMAS. But, but for Mitchell, you would have to mention SMAS. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. I don't see anybody else raising their hand, so. Uh, oh, we have any items for discussion? Again, Alan, oh, Alan Jaffe raised his hand. Uh, okay, as they come up, Alan. Um, I'd like to tell a joke, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> Jokes come later. Oh, all right. Oh, I thought it said, I thought you had that uh, slide up. I'm sorry. No, it was only items for discussion. Oh, no, here, oh, okay. Okay, we'll hold you for later. All right. Uh, Stu Madison, item for discussion. You know, uh, you think maybe next week we could uh, start doing presenters? I'm hoping to. Uh, that was the thought. And uh, we uh, discussed it at the last meeting. So the thought is I will contact uh, Thomas Madden and try and set it up. And someone suggested that rather than at 9.30, we do 9.45 or I'm sorry, 1045. Uh, so we'll, uh, which is, looks like we can pretty much achieve that. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk to them and uh, try and set up uh, for next Thursday having uh, a live presentation. That'd be terrific. If not, uh, you know, there's some great YouTube uh, videos that we can watch and they're, you know, within 10 minutes. And I don't know if anybody remembered Robin Williams's parody on golf. Ooh. Some of you may have seen that. That is hilarious. Uh, and I saw something about Buddy Hackett doing a, a joke. So, uh, but there's, there's some good stuff on uh, YouTube that we can uh, do. And remember, we still have access to the uh, Greenwich presenters. And uh, I know a few years back, uh, Bill Flannery uh, used one in a pinch and it worked out uh, pretty good. So uh, we can use any of their presentations and bring it up. Uh, so that that's a third option. So we will have something next week uh, moving ahead. Larry, you had a comment? Uh, two things. Number one, um, with regard to utilities, I just changed my electrical supplier. Uh, my house is all electric and the best rates without any uh, penalties or early cancellation or enrollment fees are 7.03 and 7.07 uh, with either public power or um, I forgot what it is, but it's uh, they're on Ed Energize Connecticut. Lev Energize CT. So uh, um, those are the two best rates and they're eight months and you can cancel whenever you want with no uh, no penalty. Uh, the other thing, um, has anybody been in contact with Joe D? Because I don't see him on here. And I was wondering if he would like to lead a, um, a discussion, uh, nine, you know, instead of it being nine o'clock, say from 9.30 to 10 or 9.15 to 
um, or, or Butke on technology, or uh, so is anybody in contact with Joe D? Yeah. I, I guess nobody is responding, so. Uh, you could call him. No, I will get, I'll send him an email, I'll call him um, and ask him if he has any interest. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Those are the two things. Uh, next Steve. slide. Tim McEwen, I don't have the hand to raise. Question. I don't have the side panel with the hand and the vote on my screen. <clears throat> oh, click on participants and uh, it'll turn up at the bottom. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Next screen, Carl. I had one quick question. Bill Bill Bill. Yeah, Bill. Um, is there any way to get a screenshot of what we're seeing off of Carl's screen? You, yeah, know, you, got, a, you got a copy of the uh, The slides were slides. sent this morning. Okay. Yeah, all right. I didn't look at that. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Carl. The... Uh, so we all have a lot of free time, and uh, among the subjects that people suggested to me, one of them was uh, Netflix recommendations. So I had a few other recommendations that were not Netflix, but I had so many Netflix, I decided to put those in slides, and we can do other uh, other carriers next time. Uh, Ozark is re recommended by Lou Terry. Some other some friends of mine also uh, recommended o Ozark. Ozark is great. Uh, Kaminsky method. I, I've watched myself. It's Alan Arkin and uh, oh, that's Michael funny. Douglas. Michael Douglas. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great. very funny. These, these guys are all our age and uh, still have a sense of humor about it. And then Stu uh, inundated me with a lot of recommendations here. Stu, are you online? Yes. Want to? Uh, yeah. Well, there's quite a lot of detail here already. I started the Spy uh, last night, and uh, those those look very good. Grace and Frankie have been around for for a while. Uh, they've got quite a few, quite a few seasons. I I think it must be in a season four or five by now. And here are the uh, here are the, the movie recommendations. The Irishman, Theory of Everything. There's a lot more movies out there. If anybody has any good ones, uh, I've watched a lot that I'm, I'm hesitant to recommend to anybody. But, the, the Irishman is uh, it's a good it's a, about a three hour movie plus but it's uh, I don't know if it's fictional historical fiction or what but it's uh, the rise of uh, Jimmy Hoffa and uh, goes into a lot of details and things that uh, some of the conspiracy theorists uh, may have even thought about but it, it, it's a good movie. I mean, it, the acting is Pesci, uh, De Niro, I think uh, Pacino is in there. And, uh, it's it's it, it's riveting. It's slow, but it's it's faster than the two popes. It's a two bathroom break movie. Yeah. <laughs> and you can pause it. That's what's good about it. <laughs> I'm looking for a movie about a man going into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the theory of everything, Brian. Only that it's a very good movie, and it covers Hawking's life from when he was in school and uh, his <laughs> and a slight change of attitude on a couple of theories. But it's all about like the Big Bang theory and his personal relationship. It was actually very interesting. He could do a lot from a wheelchair. Moving on. <laughs> I don't know. What's that gorilla supposed to signify? It was me on a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gorilla in the room. Okay. You need uh, to visit the Joe, dentist. Now, Alan. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. 
a man goes into a bar with a giraffe and they both have quite a few drinks and when they get up to leave they're extremely drunk and the giraffe passes out and falls over the man opens the door about to leave by himself when the bartender says uh hey you can't leave that lion there and the man turns around and in a slurred voice says uh I, I, don't be silly. That, that's not a lion. That's a giraffe. Uh, 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 we mute uh, Alan. Mute Alan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new can switch. We pull, can, can we the, pull on him? The brain goes into down, it. Down, uh, <laughs> uh, Next. Then a Is brain goes into a bar. The brain goes into a bar, and the bartender says, um, "We can't serve you." He says, "Why? You're out of your skull." So. Uh. <laughs> They don't so sound any better on Zoom, I'll tell you. This is what I heard the other night about the duck hunter. The duck hunter is out in the field, and he's spent two days, this is his last day, the third day. He finally sees a duck, takes a shotgun, shoots the duck. The duck comes down, lands on top of the farmer's barn, bounces off the barn onto the ground next to the silo. So he says, I don't know what to do, but he decides he's going to jump over the fence, goes into the, uh, the farmer's land, goes to the silo and is picking up the duck and his farmer comes out. And I mean, the farmer is a huge guy. And he says to him, he says, hey boy, what you doing? And he says, uh, I'm picking up my duck. I just shot it. He says, your duck? He said, it on my land, it's my duck. So the, the hunter says, no, but I shot it and it bounced off your roof barn and it landed next to your silo. And he says, well, it came down, it landed on my barn, came off and fell next to my silo. So it's my duck. He says, well, he says, according to the hunter's rules, it's, it's my duck. And the farmer says, look, he said, Let's settle this like gentlemen, farm gentlemen. He says, well, what's that? He says, I kick you in the groin, and then you kick me in the groin, and we keep doing that until one of us is left, and that's whose duck it is. So the, the hunter says, well, he says, I want that duck. He says, I'm game. So the farmer stands as full six foot six. He, you know, he looks like Aaron Judge. I mean, that's how big the guy is. And he winds up and gives a tremendous kick to the hunter's groin. The hunter falls on the floor and he's moaning and groaning and angry. Oh, he's in agony. Finally takes off about a half hour and he pulls himself up and he says, it's my turn now. And the farmer says, nah, forget about it. You can have the duck. <laughs> Alan, you have another one? I have one. Let's oh. run. They're having dinner with the father-in-law and the three sons. And after dinner, they go into the family room. And the three uh, son-in-laws are complaining to the father-in-law that they all married nuns. He said, nuns? He says, what do you mean? He says, well, we get none in the morning, none in the afternoon, and none in the evening. So just at that time, the father-in-law's wife came into the room and he said, guys, shh, shh. He says, here comes Mother Superior. <laughs> <laughs> Take it all. <laughs> I've mean, got one. Two Adams are walking down the street. One Adam says to the other, I lost an electron today. And the other one says, are you sure? And the first one says, yeah, I'm positive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, For me. Okay. With I that, out this meeting. What do you click? I have one complaint. The coffee was very weak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to bring your own. <laughs> uh, well, uh, listen, this... This is Bob Rosenthal. I want to recommend a movie that I saw that was terrific. 
I can't remember whether it was on Amazon or Netflix, but one of the two, and the name is Ex Machina, E-X-M-A-C-H-I-N-A. -A. Very good movie. Jim, you got something yeah. to say. There's a guy going in a bar, and a nun stops him. And she said to him, you're not going in there. That's the devil's house. The guy says, no, I, I, well, drink's okay. Have you ever tried it? And she says, never. He says, well, how can you condemn it if you haven't tried it? She says, oh, that's a good point. Okay, I'll try it. She says, what do ladies usually drink? He says, gin and tonic. She says, well, that, yeah. So he goes in the bar and he says to the guy, I'll have a beer and a shot and a gin and tonic and could you put it in a, a teacup for me? The guy says, Christ, is that nun still out there? <laughs> no. Okay, tried. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I guess we had uh, what up to fifty-seven at one point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. fifty-seven max. Okay, great. I noticed thank a lot you of all dropped for... out when I told my joke, but you know. <laughs> thank you all for uh, attending the meeting and. You know, we keep together this way. And again, if anybody has any questions, uh, myself, Carl, or uh, Phil, and uh, any technical questions, uh, Steve is always available to help. And uh, let's see what we got next week. Uh, we'll try and do the meeting and, and end it by uh, 9.45. We've it does take a little longer to, to get uh, through and uh, give everybody a chance to say something uh, since we don't uh, see each other in between or before the meetings. And we'll start our speaker at uh, 9.45. 10.45. Oh, I'm sorry, 10.45. You know, somebody put down 9.45 by accident and it's stuck in my head. So, yeah. Our meeting will go at nine, and then our speaker will go in at uh, or at ten, and the speaker will go in at ten forty-five. So again, thank you all. Stay safe, stay well, and watch out for the COVID idiots. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Joe. Meeting okay. in the meeting. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. All right.